If you're a regular subscriber on this channel, you know that I can be highly critical of all kinds of cars, including electric cars, diesel cars, petrol cars, MHEV, PHEVs, just name them all and I'll be critical of every one of them. But the problem is most of the time I don't get to spend a lot of time with the car. So over a week, I don't really become that owner experience of what it's like to plug in a car when you have to do a midnight flit up to Dublin or whatever it is, or a quick drive to some family member who's sick or something. Now, I don't get to do most of that because most of the cars just come and go and you end up with a different car. So a brilliant company called ecocars.ie got in touch and gave me a challenge. They're gonna give me this car for a period of 12 months and I have to drive it every day as I would normally with my own say it lay on, which is from 2006, an older car. I'm going to record the fuel amounts I use. I call it fuel still, electricity. <laughs> I do already have a home charger. So we're gonna go into the costs behind running this car after we have a look at the car. With a chance to test the car, for a longer period of time than, than a week or than even just a few days, which is what most uh, journalists get to drive. I get to drive this pretty much every day and we have been driving over the pandemic. Obviously, we've been keeping around Port Leash, uh, going to and from the shops and stuff. So far, we've spent an approximate eight euro on electricity. We have to work that one out a little bit better, but it's about eight euro on electricity and it's been pretty good, pretty good. Now there is squeaky windshield wipers, we'll get over that, and it is lashing rain here in Port Leash, so we're gonna to have to put up with the squeaks. Sorry, <laughs> it's just normal. Uh, now, this is an MG ZS, full electric car. Um, new, brand new, if you're to buy one, they're about 28 grand, give or take. This is the executive one, so it's actually the top spec one. It's that active cruise control, touch screens, Apple CarPlay, Google Android, all them things that are that are good in modern cars uh, is actually in this car in the executive version. This is actually an English import that we brought in by Eco Cars, um, specifically for me. And uh, I, I wanted to test this for two reasons. One is it's the entry point into the market. It's very very affordable, right? Second hand or new. It's quite a quite a waiting list for the new, by the way. But second hand or new, this is. Um, this is very affordable. So you're talking about sub 30 grand, but if you want to buy the executive one here in Ireland, it's, it's up there over the 30 grand mark. But if you compare the entry level one um, to something like a Renault Zoe, it's only two grand more. Now less range. It's a hell of a lot less range, actually about 100 kilometers in the difference. But that in itself really wouldn't bother putting me off if I'm honest with you, because this is a big car. This is Nissan Qashqai size. This is Mazda CX-3, kind of looking actually, Mazda CX-3 as well. So it's up in that size of car, it's a big machine, it's not a small thing. It's not a handy little machine that, you know, that you wouldn't, uh, you'd be happy driving around in the whole time. Those windshield wipers are driving me mad though, aren't you? I'm gonna have to get out and fix that. Now it's not without its little errors, right? So I have a couple of little things that I can do that are very good. Uh, the first one I'm gonna point out is that I have a curves button down here. Curves allows me to be able to change the resistance of the uh, regenerative braking. So when I take my foot off the accelerator, I'm on three now, it feels like the brakes will come on because essentially they have. This will even trigger brake lights at the back of the car as well, right? So you can run it down to two and one if you want to, have less braking if you want to. But we're driving around a town, so we're gonna leave it on three because I reckon the deceleration in around town speeds on three is the better one to have. It doesn't matter what the car is, this is my own thinking. I think you get more um, power, especially like I'm going downhill here. So I want the power. Now after a while, I have to say, MG, you've done a bloody good job on this one, but after a while, you learn to brake with the accelerator pedal. You really do. You learn to take your foot up and off a little bit early, triggering the brakes to come on, and you learn to kind of feather the throttle in a way that actually works very, very well that I don't use the brakes, the, the real like brake pedal to brake. <laughs> it's very good. It's actually one of the best regenerative systems I've seen do that for that purpose. Uh, a little similar, I suppose, would be Nissan E-Pedal or something like that along those lines. Same sort of principle the whole time. I'll fix those wipers at some point as well. <laughs> That's all right. I don't think it's rained properly since, we've been, since we got the car. Uh, on the dashboard, I have a speedo, which is in miles per hour, but also has kilometers per hour, and I have a power meter that tells me how much power I have, and I have the speedo that's in the middle as well, it's also in miles per hour, but it's okay, I have kilometers on the outside. 
This touchscreen, I do find a little bit laggy in comparison to some of the competition out there. But really, you don't really touch it a whole lot. It's radio on that side. There's navigation built in. Then you have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and that's kind of it. Things that I've noticed that are missing immediately, uh, apart from shopping by Cooks of the Boot, which we'll get into a full review of the car later, but some of the things that I know are missing. So when I plug the car in to charge it, it just charges immediately. There's no timers or anything I can set to say I want to charge at night time or using the night rate meters. And I can't find any of that in the car. If it exists, I can't see it there, and I don't see anyone else in other reviews talking about it either. So I don't know where that is. Um, two, the the car doesn't seem to want to charge unless I lock the doors. So I can't sit in the car and charge it. I'm not sure why that is. That could be a communications issue between the charger and the, and the car, or just the car doesn't do that. Don't know why that is. It's kind of a weird one. Um, I'll figure that out later on. That's not, that's not an urgent thing. I don't mind, because I'm only charging at home at the moment. I haven't used any of the fast chargers. I haven't used any of the street chargers. I've just charged at home. I haven't really gone that far to get it there. Uh, char speaking of charging, it's a 44 and a half kilowatt hour battery that's in this car, so range is about 250 kilometers, give or take, uh, depending on how you drive it. They actually go a little bit further, well I've got a little bit further out of it from driving around the town. Obviously you use regenerative braking quite a lot, but if you go out in the motorway, it's going to do a little bit less than that. The car feels quite urgent when you're driving it, and by that I mean it's not like Tesla fast, but that's not what you're paying for here. This is more than half the price of the next nearest Tesla to it, okay? so it's a long way off. The main competition on price of this is like a Renault Zoe. It's, it's that end, it's the smaller end and the, the more affordable end of the market this competes in. And I have to admire MG for putting a car on the market in the UK and now in Ireland that is comp not just competitively priced, but like properly priced to compete in a market that has cars that are too expensive. And I read a report the other day from the SEAI, I don't know who wrote it, but they were saying that electric cars are, are deemed to be too expensive, but the gap is narrowing all the time. I, I have to explain to the SEAI, I should sit people down, they should really ask questions on this. The gap is narrowing on the price between an ICE engine car and an electric car, not just because electric cars are getting a tiny bit cheaper, but because ICE engine cars price has gone up dramatically over the last two years. So electric, so petrol and diesel engine cars are getting more expensive. It's not that electric cars are getting a lot cheaper. They're not, not until now. Now suddenly the Chinese have entered the market, who a Chinese company owns MG and has brought it back from the dead. Uh, so they've entered the market now and that's absolutely going to rattle some cages out there, which I'm quite looking forward to, to be honest with you. So what pushes the MG, well apart from the heat pump, which is really good, so you end up burning yourself sitting here looking at it, it's very good. So uh, this has a heat pump, like, like all electric cars these days, they've all got a sort of a heat pump in them, uh, so it's able to get warm instantly. So as soon as you get in the car and switch it on, it's already warm. Now this doesn't have a function or an app, so you're not going to get any of the things you think about when you think about electric cars at the moment. Um, there isn't an app that connects up to MG somewhere yet that allows you to remote contr remotely control the cars or the temperature systems or anything else in the car. That isn't available yet. Uh, now that's not to say it won't come out. MG are making very slow strides forward. I would imagine in the next couple of years we're going to see another couple of groups come into this realm of what's happening out there within the MG range. Not just MG of course. There's going to be multiple other players that are coming in too and I think it's going to be quite huge for people. I don't even realise just how busy it's going to be. So this car replaces everything that the say at Leon would have done. We're going to drive it every day. It'll take the kids to school, the wife to work, me to work. The usual jobs of a family vehicle out there. So if you're interested in how much a car costs to run, how much it costs to fuel it at night time, all that usual stuff that we talk about in electric cars, but do it over 12 months, then subscribe right here. Last word is, this video is not sponsored by EcoCars. There isn't a sponsor of this video. So if this car isn't good, I'm going to kick it to death. Sorry, EcoCars. <laughs> That's the rule of the game. Anyway, there's no sponsor involved. Uh, it could get a little bit messy. Anyway, let's, let's wander on for a little spin around in the car.